This is Rick Wilson and welcome to Dragon Proof. Hey guys, I know a lot is going on in the world right now. We have uh, quarantine, COVID, and a recent uptick in, in uh, cases. We have the election, regardless of your opinions on the election. Those things themselves are major disruptors. Uh, and we're coming into the holiday shopping season, which while a positive disruptor for the e-commerce industry is always disruptive for our businesses. So I wanna do a quick chat about something that I think will be helpful to many of us as we head into that holiday season. Uh, it's called the five steps to restructuring business. Um, you know, if you've been following the news this year, retail bankruptcies have been being announced almost daily. I mean, huge brands, J. Crew, JCPenney, Pier One, GMC, uh, Neiman Marcus. Uh, it, it's been wild out there. Uh, and I, that was a small, that was a small listing. You know, the list is, I think this is going to be go down in record as the most number of major retailers filing for bankruptcy uh, ever this year. So there's two types of bankruptcies. There's chapter seven where you liquidate everything. Think like Circuit City for those of you who remember them or Sears. Um, and then there's chapter 11, which is where you're intending to stay in business and you restructure your business. Um, and so why does a company choose chapter 11 restructuring? Well, from a bankruptcy standpoint, it lets you literally restructure your debt so you can continue being a growing concern. But I think there's a bigger version of that. You don't have to be in bankruptcy to want to restructure. In fact, I think restructuring is a very healthy tool for every business. You should go through an annual restructuring uh, thought process and planning process, not, diff not that different than doing a disaster recovery plan every year. And you know, here's, here's an example of something we've seen in the media in the last week or two. You know, there's, there's talk of this Hollywood crisis. Um, and what they mean by that is that the, the major studios are struggling right now. They have all this film that they've produced. They stopped producing for a while during quarantine, but they have major movies. The new Bond movie, uh, the Tencent word, Tenant, which came out, but didn't do as well because no one's going to movie theaters. Um, but Hollywood itself is going to be okay. You know, Disney is going to be fine. They bet on, on Disney Plus and they have a lot of content. But other people like Regal Cinemas, which are in the news and AMC, which is in the news, are either going to close down completely or massively reduce their footprint. And they could have avoided a version of that disruption, right? They, they chose not to see that it was obvious that someday streaming was going to become the primary method of delivery. I remember in college in Boston in the 1990s, I had a media professor tell me that someday we would watch new releases on opening night from the comfort of our living room. So for 25 years, this is being discussed and it took a pandemic to force this to the forefront. And when I talk about restructuring and thought processes, that's the kind of stuff. If you put your head in the sand and don't think these things through, you can get caught flat footed and your business can get really screwy. But if you're willing to see where the ball's going, um, even if you don't know how to get there, which we're gonna talk about how to apply these lessons in a second, even if you don't know how to get there, you can actually start skating there to be prepared when it comes. Um, so here's how any business, not just a business in bankruptcy, can use these concepts of restructuring ahead of holiday 2020. One is have a vision. You could have asked anyone in Hollywood 20 years ago or almost anyone in Hollywood, do they think streaming would someday be the primary method of, of content consumption? And the answer would have, for most people, been yes. There would have been a great debate over what the business model would look like, how hard it was going to get to be to get there, when when were we going to have enough bandwidth? But I don't think anyone would have questioned that that's where it was heading. And so, and it doesn't require you to know that answer. We want to start with the hundred thousand foot view of the marketplace, the economy, the players, and the solutions. You know, um, Blockbuster, you know, bless their soul, they they saw it coming. They tried to get into streaming, but they were too little, too late. Um, and so you don't have to have all the answers now. What you have to know is which way the winds are blowing. And it's worth taking some time out of your business every year to, to stand atop the mountain and look out and have the vision for what you do and where it's going. Uh, and then the next part of that process, step two, if you will, is understanding where you are in that chain, right? As an e-commerce proprietor, uh, you, you may know where your industry is going and you may be somewhere in the middle of that chain and not totally able to control how that's going to play out. In fact, very few people in the world, unless you're a you know multi-billion dollar or trillion dollar conglomerate like an Apple or a Google, can control how these things are going to play out. And so you really want to have take some stock of where you are in that chain uh, and, and make some educated guesses about how your role in that change is going chain is going to evolve as that vision that's usually somewhat self-evident starts to come to fruition in the more macro scale. Um, the third step is to come up with an adaptation strategy. Uh, and this is this goes on. This is why you do this after understanding where you are in the chain. You want to treat it like a disaster recovery plan. 
Uh, if I was in the business of making VHS tapes in the 80s, uh, it would have been really critical for me to be aware that that technology, that analog tape technology was going to change. So here's an example of a disaster recovery plan adaptation strategy uh, in business that I thought was fantastic. Nokia, the famed cell phone maker that ultimately became part of Microsoft, they started out in the 1800s as a cable maker, literally just making steel cords. Uh, and over a course of 130 or 40 year history before they got acquired by Microsoft, they went from making steel cords um, in Europe to being the largest cell phone manufacturer in the world at that time. Uh, and that, that is an adaptation strategy. Just because you're today selling uh, N90 or you know cool, fashionable masks doesn't mean that's what you're going to be doing next year or in five years. And you want to understand, you know, if your real business is just in delivering textiles, then you want to understand where you're on that chain, where the textile industry is going, and then make sure you have a strategy to keep yourself in the forefront and succeeding. The fourth step is to lay out the blocks needed for that plan. So going back to my VHS analogy, if I realized that the technology I was selling VHS tapes in that example was uh, about to become obsolete, then I would need to look at what steps it would take, assuming I wanted to stay in the media creation uh, business, what steps it would take to go from analog to digital and maybe get into CDs and DVDs. And then from there, as those as those technologies are peaking, I would want to be able to look at what steps it's going to take to um, to get into streaming. I mean, Netflix. If you're if you're as old as I am, I remember Netflix as a thing that mailed me DVDs, and everyone sort of laughed at them when they went streaming first. I don't think anyone's laughing now. You know, Netflix is along with you know HBO and now Apple and Disney pretty much the drivers of content in Hollywood. Uh, and so that's what that that's how you execute a plan. It took them 20 years to execute it, but it was phenomenally thought out. Um, and then here's the thing about timing. And this is why going back to the streaming idea, 25 years ago, I had a professor telling me that streaming was coming, but no one knew when we saw the pieces happening. And so there's an art and a science to when disruption comes, you start putting your plan in motion. Certain plans like the Netflix plan, you had to start out much earlier and make sure those blocks were laid out so you could get down the road. Other things you can adapt right when, right when the disruption hits. So to recap, there's five steps to restructuring your business, mentally restructuring your business to help keep you ahead of the game. One is have a vision, take a hundred thousand foot view of the marketplace, the economy, the players and the solutions coming in your ecosystem. Number two, understand what role you play in that chain. You may not be the head and you may not be the tail, but you're probably somewhere in the middle and you want to understand how that affects you and your business. Based on those two step pieces, steps one and two, step three is come up with an adaptation strategy for the future. Think of it a little bit like a disaster recovery plan, but in a more positive way. Number four, lay out blocks needed for that plan. So you're always in motion, staying ahead of the evolution of your industry. And number five, when disruption comes, put your plan in motion. This way you can always be growing your business and you will hopefully never have to end up in bankruptcy to restructure. So, you know, ultimately the moral of the story is it doesn't take a literal bankruptcy to make a practical restructuring plan for disruption, it's like a holiday shopping period. We're all coming into what should hopefully be the best part of the year for our businesses. And I think, you know, I would suggest thinking of these things now, letting them, letting them percolate in your brain. And then um, when, the, when the holiday shopping season crests and you have some time to think about your business next year, think about how you'd restructure your business right now if you could so that you never have to end up in bankruptcy and do it that way. So for now, stay safe, stay engaged. Please follow us on Twitter at DragonProofPod and subscribe to us at Apple Podcasts. Thanks, everyone. I will talk to you all soon.